Hello. Tonight I am here with Professor Fred, and he will be telling us a traditional legend of the Cherokee Indian Nation. That's right. Listen carefully everyone. The story is called, How the Rabbit Stole the Otter's Coat. The animals were of different sizes and wore coats of various colors and patterns. Some wore long fur, and others wore short. Some had rings on their tails, and some had no tails at all. Some had coats of brown, others of black or yellow. They were always disputing about their good looks, so at last they agreed to hold a council to decide who had the finest coat. They had heard a great deal about the otter, who lived so far up the creek that he seldom came down to visit the other animals. It was said that he had the finest coat of all, but no one knew just what it was like, because it was a long time since anyone had seen him. They did not even know exactly where he lived, only the general direction, but they knew he would come to the council when the word got out. Now the rabbit wanted the verdict for himself, so when it began to look as if it might go to the otter he thought up a plan to cheat him out of it. He asked a few sly questions, until he learned what trail the otter would take to get to the council place. Then, without saying anything, he went on ahead, and after four days travel he met the otter and knew him at once by his beautiful coat of soft dark brown fur. The otter was glad to see him and asked him where he was going. Oh, said the rabbit, the animals sent me to bring you to the council, because you live so far away, they were afraid you might not know the road. The otter thanked him, and they were on together. They traveled all day toward the council ground, and at night the rabbit selected the camping place, because the otter was a stranger in that part of the country, and cut down bushes for beds and fixed everything in good shape. The next morning they started on the trail again. In the afternoon the rabbit began to pick up wood and bark as they went along and began to load it on his back. When the otter asked what this was for, the rabbit said it was that they might be warm and comfortable at night. After a while, when it was near sunset, they stopped and made their camp. When supper was over the rabbit got a stick and shaved it down to a paddle. The otter wondered and asked again what that was for. I have good dreams when I sleep with a paddle under my head, said the rabbit. When the paddle was finished the rabbit began to cut away the bushes so as to make a clean trail down to the river. The otter wondered more and more and wanted to know what this meant. Said the rabbit, this place was called, and translated to English, the place where it rains fire. Sometimes it rains fire here, and the sky looks a little that way tonight. You go to sleep and I'll sit up and watch, and if the fire does come, as soon as you hear me shout, you run and jump into the river. Better hang your coat on a limb over there, so it won't get burnt. The otter did as he was told, and they both doubled up to go to sleep, but the rabbit kept awake. After a while the fire burned down to red coals. The rabbit called, but the otter was fast asleep and made no answer. In a little while he called again, but the otter never stirred. Then the rabbit filled the paddle with hot coals and threw them up into the air and shouted, It's raining fire. It's raining fire. The hot coals fell all around the otter and he jumped up. To the water. Cried the rabbit, and the otter ran and jumped into the river, and he has lived in the water ever since. The rabbit took the otter's coat and put it on, leaving his own instead, and went on to the council. All the animals were there, everyone looking out for the otter. At last they saw him in the distance, and they said one to the other, The otter is coming. And sent one of the small animals to show him the best seat. They were all glad to see him and went up in turn to welcome him, but the otter kept his head down, with one paw over his face. They wondered that he was so bashful, until the bear came up and pulled the paw away, and there was the rabbit with his split nose. He sprang up and started to run, when the bear struck at him and pulled his tail off. But the rabbit was too quick for them, and he got away. This is the reason the rabbit has such a small stubby tail. Well that was certainly an interesting story. But what does it mean? Is it simply an explanation on why the rabbit has a small tail? Well yes, but I feel there is a deeper meaning. I feel that the story teaches us not to envy those around us, for having nice clothing, a beautiful body, or more material possessions than we have. It also teaches us, just as many Native American legends tend to do, not to be deceived for to our fellow humans, 
and to be honest with others. Along with explaining why rabbits have small tails, it is also meant to explain why the otters live as they do in the water, but this is explained in an anthropomorphic sense, which means that the animals are able to speak and are given human-like characteristics. Stories such as these are why many native tribes held honesty and virtue in high regards. Wonderful! It's great to know that stories such as these served such a deep purpose to the Cherokee people. Thank you Professor Fred, for bringing this story to us. And as always, much respect to the Cherokee people, and all other cultures on Earth. Let the professor and I know what this story meant to you in the comments. We hope you have enjoyed this presentation, and good night to you all.